you guys, Mary here from SVD Cuts, and I'm here in my new craft work studio space where I actually spend like all my time designing and testing everything that you see on our website. And this is my new space, and we are working on a new video space in another room, which we hope to have ready next time we do a video. So that's pretty exciting for us. We're enjoying having a little more space to work in, and hopefully it makes things a little easier for me and for Leo. So this week, I came up with some really fun stuff. I think the coolest part is this little decorative bird cage. And you could probably put some stuff inside that's just decorative if you wanted to. I don't think I would really use it for like a gift container or anything. It's more of just like a decor piece. You can put some cute stuff around it and put it on a shelf or something in your craft room or somewhere where you like to look at some cute stuff. I like to do that myself, just have little little displays of cute stuff around that makes me happy to look at. So that is really fun. I think it looks really cool if you just do all one color. Like obviously I did mine in all this light yellow and the same color flower and the same color ribbon but with a contrasting liner on the inside. So this is actually a lot simpler to put together than you would think. So I'm going to show you how that goes together. I've got all my pieces cut out for that. And also we've got some more fun bags and boxes here. This one is super fun, obviously, and it ties closed with this cute little ribbon here. And I went ahead and used some eyelets. These are perfectly sized for 3 16 eyelets, but you can also leave the eyelets off. And the coolest part about this bag is that you could use it for really any holiday, birthday, or occasion, just depending on what kind of paper you use. You could obviously leave off this decoration here and just get creative, so that's a lot of fun. So we've also got two new really cute little gift boxes also. This one I love also has the flower on it. And it's cool because you can make it with the cutout um, vellum inside. You can kind of see through it. You could also use completely see-through like acetate or sheet protectors so you can see little candies inside. Or you can also make it without the cutout on top, just a plain star box. So this one's fun. Th the sides of it are a little bit angled out. So it's, it's different than the existing star-shaped box that we have. A lot of fun to embellish, and so is our little jewelry box here. And this is a one-piece box also, so if you want to whip one up really fast, you can do that. And you can also have fun using our cute little three-dimensional bow that I've got on the top here too. So I'm going to show you how those go together. And finally, we've got a little matching card here. This was actually suggested by Cheryl on our design team. She said, hey Mary, you better make a wrapped card because I think it's super cool. So this little band just slides off here, and the whole entire thing goes into an envelope, but then you just, you take it out of the envelope, and you pull this little band off, oops, mine's stuck on my brad here, and then this little wrapped thing here is just vellum and these windows, and then you just pull out your card, which is just a simple square card, you can decorate it however you want. Mine, I used this paper from American Crafts, it's the Dear Lizzie line, it's the Neapolitan collection. And this paper it has like paper ruffles on it, which is really cool. So use like a really fun paper on the inside to make it more like jazzed up and just wrap it up. Super cute. So I have all the pieces cut out for my three dimensional items to show you how those go together. So let's get started. All right, so let's start with the most simple thing first, and this little 3D bow is super simple. It's just these two pieces here, and it's going to fold like this, and I'm going to take my cute little brad and just pop that right through the hole, and then just go ahead and put the back on the hole too, and close up your brad, and you've got a cute little bow. And if you want to maybe stick something through to kind of round it out a little bit. You can stick a, a marker or something inside to just make it stick out a little bit more here. Okay, so next I'm going to make my little jewelry box and I'm gonna leave off the, uh, the striped and the embossed stuff that you see here. That's optional, you can add it later. We're just gonna make the box itself and as you can see, it's all one piece here and it's pretty self-explanatory. Just pick a uh, pick a flap and start gluing. I'm going to do this one here which is going to be in the corner there. So just put a nice thin even layer of glue and line up line up the crease with the edge of the other piece. 
and just hold it while it dries and put a little more glue on the next one and just hold that while it dries also and it's starting to take shape it's pretty easy to see what goes where so next we can put some glue on this one here I'm going to flip it around so I can get a better view and just put a little glue on that tab and hold that while it dries so that forms the top we're going to go ahead and do that to the other side to finish forming the top of the box and then the rest of it forms the bottom so these these two tabs here get glued like this to start forming the bottom and then we've got these this tab here which is going to get glued there and the other one on the other side also to form the bottom like this so then you've got your bottom like that and your top is just hinged like that so next let's make our star box and I'm just going to show you the lid because it's pretty much the same process as the bottom of the box so for our lid we've got these three pieces that go on the top the um, this is the top because it's a little bit thicker than the other one. The smaller one is the liner, which goes on the inside to cover up the tabs. And this is your little vellum piece here, which is going to go between the two. And then we've got these two other pieces, which we are going to glue together. Just make sure that, see along, along the top, these are like evenly um, shaped, but on the bottom, you can see that there's like a large triangle here and a small one then a large one so just make sure that they are lined up the same way that the same type of tabs are along the top of both of them and the same type of tabs are along the bottom so what you don't want is for it to be like this which would be hard to do because there's no tab to glue there anyway so just go ahead and glue this tab to this side and then we're going to curl it around and glue this tab to this side to form like a circle so go ahead and put a nice thin even layer of glue on your tab and just line it up as best you can so that the crease is along the edge of the other piece and just do the same thing on the other side and you you definitely have to love this particular paper it's so cute this Dear Lizzie paper from American Crafts it's so cute and so fun just love everything about it. Okay, so now we've got this here, and you can start to see a star shape forming like this. So, like I was pointing out, this like large triangle opening here, that's going to be the point of a star. It would not, the point of the star is not going to be like this, it's going to be like this. So, the points of the star are all the same shape in the same size. So let's take our larger, set the vellum aside, take the larger star, which is on the bottom. I'm going to set the smaller star aside. And I'm just going to, one at a time, glue the tabs into place on the star. So just start with one. Take your time. Line it up real nice. Do a nice thin layer of glue. Hold it while it dries and then move on to the next one and just work your way around the whole star until you've got it all glued into place real nice. So I've got the front of my star glued on nicely and then on the back I've just got these little flaps that I've been gluing down here to just uh, they just finish it off and they make the edges a little more reinforced so just put a little a little thin line of glue and just press them down and I've only got two left here so that just gives it a nice finished look so next we are going to put our vellum in place and 
Also, if you wanted to use acetate or a page protector, I did not have good luck with my cutting machine cutting acetate. I can cut vellum, which I did here, but if you want to use acetate, you could cut this out of plain paper and then lay it on some acetate and trace around or cut around with regular scissors just to, to use it as a template. So let's just put a thin line of glue on the inside of our lid here. And then, let's see which is the right side of this. Doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so just put that in there and I'm gonna lay it down and press down to make sure it gets a good hold there. And then I'm just gonna put glue on the inside again and take my liner and just place that right there to finish it off, except I meant to flip it this way so that it blends in even better. So next, I'm gonna do our three-dimensional flower here. And it is just a big scalloped spiral, basically. So all you're gonna do is start curving it around itself in the middle and just keep working your way around. So something that I found to be kind of helpful is, especially in the, in the center when you first start, is to take a marker or a pen or something and get that going in the middle to help you kind of curve the petals around because you kind of want them to be curved a little bit if possible. And things kind of start to get a little messy and things might overlap not perfectly, but that is okay actually because my nice flower here is, it's not perfect, it's messy, but it looks cool when it's messy, so don't fret and don't feel like it has to be too perfect. So just keep working your way around and after a little while, I like to just put a couple of dots of glue to start reinforcing it and making it stay in place. So my flower here is all resting on my desk, but I think it's easier if you can lift it up and hold it over the floor where the whole entire thing can hang down in a spiral. That way it can unwind itself as you are wrapping it around because otherwise it starts to get twisted and then the little delicate pieces might break off when it starts to twist around too much. So hold it over the floor so the whole thing can fall down. And if it does break somewhere, it's not the end of the world, you can just glue like one petal to the other petal and then just keep going. So just keep working your way around, adding glue. And don't be too particular about it lining up perfectly. The messier, the better actually. All right, so I've gotten my way all the way down to the end here, and I'm just gonna finish it off by putting some glue on the last petal here and just holding that in place. And then my final tip for this is just when you want to glue it onto something, like how I've glued it onto the top of my birdhouse here, or my bird cage, I mean, or how I have it glued on my Starbox, um, just if you have a hot glue gun, I would definitely use that to just put a big fat layer of hot glue on the whole entire bottom and then just plop it right onto your project. All right, so finally our bird cage here. And we've got these two little pieces that we'll set aside for the end, that's obviously the top. And we've got the bottom here. One is a little bit larger than the other. This one's a little smaller, so I'm gonna set that aside. That's the liner. So this is the bottom, and then these are our two, one piece like this, and then another piece. Um, first, we want to start gluing the sides to the bottom. So I'm going to put glue on this tab here, and just one at a time, I'm going to um, just glue it onto the bottom, and I'm gonna work my way around. So, like usual, just a nice thin little layer of glue evenly along the bottom. And I'm just going to 
put that in place and I'm going to line up the edge of the paper with the crease as perfectly as possible. And I'm just going to work my way around on these other tabs here. So I've got one of my pieces here glued on. It looks pretty strange. And then I'm just going to do the same exact thing with the other piece. And the only difference is these little tabs here are going to finish it off on the inside. So just do the same thing um, that we did before by gluing these tabs onto the bottom. And then also just go ahead and put this little side tab into place on the other side. So just go ahead and do that and work your way all the way around. Okay, so our birdcage is starting to take shape and also looks pretty strange still. So next we want to put the liner in the bottom before we start to close up the top. So just go ahead and put a nice even layer of glue all over the entire bottom and then just place your liner inside. And something that looks nice is if you do a contrasting paper like I did with my yellow birdcage. But whatever floats your boat, I've also got this same color paper going in right now, which also looks nice. And just press that down, make sure it's nice and even because once we close it up, you won't be able to change that at all. Okay, so next, let's, you can really start with any tab here, but basically, what we're going to do is just take any one of these top tabs and just on the side put a nice thin layer of glue and just glue it right in place on its neighbor just being sure to line it up as perfectly as you can so that the edge of the paper is on the crease and just go ahead and work your way all the way around and Take your time and just hold each one while it dries as best you can. So I finished gluing all my tabs around in a circle and when I got to the final one, it's okay if you stick your hand inside here and if you kind of bend it a little bit, it's not a big deal because it pops back into shape pretty nicely. So we just finish it off with a little ring of glue around the top here to lay this top piece in place. And I'm actually going to, I'm pushing down and it's creating enough space for my hand to get in there a little bit so that I can push from the other side gently around the circle a little bit and just get that into place there. And I'm going to push down on the top while I take my hand out. And there is the top. And now next we are going to glue these two rings together, but only on the ring part, not on the bottom. And just go ahead and glue those together and then split the bottom open like this and put some glue inside there. And then just put that right onto the top. And I'm gonna use my little trick again to get inside there and push up from the bottom while I put that into place. And it definitely looks nice if you put a 3D flower on top of this bird cage. And if you put some ribbon on the top like I've done here on this yellow one. And if you feel like your top is a little bit imperfect, it definitely hides any imperfections if you put the ribbon and the flowers and stuff up there too. So there we go, there's my bird cage. So when I made my little jewelry box, I cut the top panels out of the same color paper as the box itself, and then I ran them through my embossing machine. And I just wanted to mention that my Sizzix Big Shot embossing machine is definitely my favorite embossing machine because it's, it's super sturdy and it works awesome. And when you crank it through the machine, it is like so sturdy and so stable and it doesn't crack or pop. You don't feel like you're breaking anything when you're using it. So if you are in the market for an embossing machine, definitely two thumbs up for the Big Shot. And I also love the Sizzix Eclipse cutting machine because it cuts so, so awesomely. When I cut my birdhouse, I cut it out probably about five times, and every single time 
it did not tear or get caught anywhere. It cut every single piece perfectly every time. And when I was done, I just peeled the pieces right off my mat and the little in-between pieces, they were all left on the mat. So I did not have to do any poking or weeding or pulling any of the little pieces out. So it cuts so well. And I also love the scoring feature because it, um, like normally we have some, some scoring lines on a lot of our projects and you can choose to have the machine cut those as not cut them but score them instead of cutting them. So it just barely cuts it a little bit so it doesn't cut all the way through, it just cuts the top layer of the paper. So you don't see the score lines as much, you just see more of a finished look. So I loved working with that, it was really easy to do. And if you want to see a step-by-step -step on our website, we have a how to use that feature in eCal. So thanks for watching, happy crafting. If you make any of these projects, I'd love to see them. So I'll catch you next time. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle.